So here's the question. And I need everybody to honestly answer this question right now. So do you think Apple's price, the stock price, which is currently trading at $175.86, can trade at $200 by January 19, 2024? Put your answers in chat right now. Got a lot of yeses. <laughs> I see for sure. Hell yeah. <laughs> right. So based on what you know about Apple and based on what you know about the economy, you said yes. Like most people have said yes, of course. Right. Is this even a question? Right. So basically what you've done is you've predicted the potential price of a stock in the future. And that in a simple sense is what an option is. Right. You just did it for the growth. And we're going to talk about what it is when it grows and when it depreciates, when it falls. It's two types. So everybody got the question right. And so let's keep moving. Right. So, like I said, essentially, the future price prediction of a given asset is what you just did. Right. Here's the example. The asset was Apple. That was a stock you chose. I gave you the price what it is now. That's as of today. It might have went down a few cents after hours. The future price prediction was two hundred dollars. And that's the strike price. And we'll show you how we came up with that. And the future date, right? So January 19, 2024, that's a little over two years away. That's the expiration date. And so we, when I say expiration date is because you're giving yourself a specific time to have this number be hit. Now, granted, it doesn't have to even hit 200. And we'll talk about why, um, because there's money that can be made either way, if it makes it to it or if it doesn't. All right. So I need everybody just to understand that piece. Yeah, All right, so, go ahead. Yeah, so what are option contracts? Option contracts offers the buyer the opportunity to buy or sell depending on the type of contract that they hold. So the cho the chosen asset is at a price set out in the contract at expiration date. So this is key. Um, options differ from shares. So a lot of people a lot of times get confused and saying, you know, am I making a call or a put or am I buying or selling shares? So when you're holding options, every option that you hold is worth 100 shares. So you can be a buyer of options and you can also be a seller of options if you have more than 100 shares. So for every buyer, there is a seller. So each contract is worth 100 shares, which is why you always see contracts expressed. Sometimes you see $25.26. That's really $2,526 uh, per that option contract. So Always remember that option contracts are broken up and always worth every option contract is worth 100 shares. And you have the right to purchase those 100 shares at that expiration date as long as the contract is potentially fulfilled. Um, and so in order for that contract to be fulfilled, the, the stock actually has to go above the strike price, which we'll talk about. Yeah. And I want people to be very clear about that. And I put it in bold letters for a reason. Their contracts are not shares. And so when people buy a share of a company, or we like to say when we're teaching kids, a slice of a company, right, you're going to pay the, the uh, equities price at that time. So today, Apple was 175. Two days ago, it was 171. If you wanted to share, that's how much you would pay. Options are completely different. They're not based on the share, although that does take uh, into account um, how the, the bid and the ask is perceived. Um, and we'll talk about how that works too. Yep. Yep. So you have right here, a stock option contract is the option to buy or sell a hundred shares. So one contract equals a hundred shares. So you can buy multiple contracts. You could buy two contracts. That would be 200 shares, three contracts, 400. And then, um, you take a look, three contracts, 300 and four contracts, 400. So this is imperative important for us to kind of understand a lot of times when people are taking a look at option contracts, a lot of times they get confused. They're saying, okay, why am I purchasing this one contract? How is it worth hundred shares? So on the sell side, how, like where do option contracts actually come from? So option contracts actually come from sellers. So you have people who may own a thousand shares of Apple and they decide to actually sell you the actual options. Those options actually cost a what? A premium, a select premium. So it's imperative to understand that that option contracts are always worth 100 shares. And this is how they're actually created by a seller. A seller sells you that option. You pay a premium. So you pay a price. The seller collects that premium. Perfect. All right. So there's two types of options. And this is again, this is for beginners. Obviously, there's more advanced and 
we can talk about that maybe a little bit later because I'm sure some people are in, involved in trading options. But it comes down to two for the beginner stage, and that's calls and puts. I'm going to talk about calls really quickly, right? So calls, that pretty much is if you think the stock price move up, you're going to make a call. So a call option are speculating on the price increase of an asset. They are the financial contracts that give you the buyer the right, but not the obligation. So you don't have to, but you can buy an asset at a specific price within a specific time, which would be that expiration date. So a call buyer profits when the underlying asset increases in price. So Apple, this is our example. We're going to use Apple because it's the greatest company in the world, right? Apple, if it currently is at $175 per share today, if I'm looking at the future price of it, and I believe that it's going to go up, and majority of you said that, yeah, by January 2024, it can make it to $200, then I'm making a call on that because I'm saying that the price of Apple will appreciate in that given time. Now, as it appreciates from 175, if I bought that call today, I'm going to make money all the way up until it hits 200. I'll make even more money if it passes 200. And so this is key to know the difference between the two, right? So if I'm saying that the price is going to go up and I believe in that, and again, we're investing in solid companies, right? That have appreciation and have growth and strong fundamentals, then I would make a call. Now we got to say this, investing has considerable risk. And we always stress to people, please, if you don't know how to trade stocks, you probably shouldn't start with options, right? You should probably have a portfolio that has some stocks in it, that some long-term companies that you can believe in. Obviously, Microsoft and Apple, we talk about a lot, NVIDIA, AMD, all these companies that are strong, you should have stock in them. And then if you want to invest in options, I think it's a great idea as well. So those are calls. If you think the price is going to go up, you're going to make a call on that option. Yep. So then we have on the opposite side, we have on the opposite side puts. So put options. So put options actually allow you to make money off of assets price going down. So put options can be very lucrative. A lot of people always ask, what can you use put options for? So there's been a myth that's been going around for years on top of years where we haven't been in this space, where we've been tricked out of when we think, hey, that the stock market, you can only make money off the stock market going up, but you can actually make money off of Apple stock price coming down, NVIDIA, Tesla, whatever stock, Intel here, you can make money off that stock price actually declining. The increase, so what happens is you pay a specific premium, and if the stock price goes and falls, for example, Intel here, Intel's at $50.62. If Intel then falls $5, you can profit off of that. So instead of you just holding shares, and when you're holding shares, you may lose value of your shares when it declines, you can actually profit and make money. So I tell people that this is a great strategy to use, especially on red days and times of market turmoil. So for example, when the coronavirus first hit, people actually profited off that market downfall. When we saw the markets decline 36%, people just did it in their positions and hold shares and just see their value, their shares decrease. They also use put options to actually hedge against their portfolio. So the reason why I really like put options is honestly because you can actually make money to the downside with a stock going down, and then you can go ahead and purchase. So one of the one of the things that I really like to say about put options is I utilize put options on Square most recently. We've all seen that Square is what came down from 240 and 250, and now is sitting at about 167 at today's close. So using put options, I was able to profit of trading this stock to the downside. But yes, I like Square long term. So guess what? Now I profited off of making money off that stock going down. And now I had the ability to be able to buy shares at a lower price. But then I also profited from that. So now I actually have money and equity to be able to pour in on quality companies that I'm now been able to buy cheaper. So put options, lose value when the stock goes up. So that's key. So unlike call options that when the stock goes up, you're making money, put options when the stock goes down. Uh, when a stock goes up, you're actually losing money on put options. All right. So, so I want to real quick because I want people to really catch this. Right. And so I want you to notice something here. When I made my call option, look how far out I went. Right. 2024, which is two years away. When I did a put option. Right. If you look here in the example, we only went to March 2022. Lawrence, tell, tell them why the, the difference in time span when we do puts yeah. and calls. Yeah. So like a lot of times, if we're taking a look at, you know, how far the market has dropped and went down, we've seen a couple pullbacks here. We've seen pullbacks back here in 2020, where we saw a 36% decline. 
We saw a bear market that came in 2018. We saw a short mini fall in 2013 and 2015. We saw the financial crisis in 2008. We also saw a downturn in the dot-com bubble. So these downturns have actually been very small. So the timing, when we take a look at the market of over this 100 year existence of the stock market, 94 years out of the 100, the stock market has actually been going up. So when we take a look, the stock market is going up more than it's going down. So you don't wanna be caught in puts on certain companies for long periods of time because you can lose a lot of money. Perfect, perfect. All right, so expiration dates, right? And so again, when we gave the example, we said January 19, 2024. For the Intel example, we said March 18, 2022. Uh, and I gave those dates because those are significant dates. Uh, they're called quadruple witching. And we said that that happens every quarter. So the third month of every quarter, the third Friday, quadruple witching will happen, which means that, and we said this on Market Mondays plenty of times, that contracts will expire. And so when we talk about those dates, those are expiration dates for contracts uh, in March and obviously in December. So an expiration date is the final date on which a contract is valid. So after that time, the contract has expired. Option owners can choose a couple of things. You can exercise the contract, which means that you were going to buy 100 shares, right? So let's say you have five contracts. You have the right, not the obligation, to buy 500 shares. And, or you can sell the option contract. If you haven't made any, if you've made profit, you can take profit there, or you can choose to buy more. So you have three things you can do at the expiration date. Here's what we tell people. You don't want to wait to the expiration date, right? You're not waiting to that date to actually make a move. Because again, when the expiration dates come, a lot of people are selling off and taking profits. You want to make sure that you can make the most as possible. So just keep that in mind. Now, expiration dates can range in length of time from days to weeks to months to years. And so we showed you the example and Rashad and myself, we talk about this all the time. We like to go out in leaps, right? So we like to have as much time as possible uh, for our positions to have their volatility, to have their ups and their downs uh, for new cycles. And obviously right now we're seeing with uh, Omicron right now, there's pullbacks, right? But we're in positions that are for two to three years out. It gives us time for it to correct and also appreciate over time. So the longer, this is important, the longer the expiration is also useful to absolute re retains time value, even if the stock trades below the stock price. So it's fine if you don't get to your strike price, as long as it's trending towards your stock price, you'll be fine. So these are just two examples of expiration dates, like next week, December 30th, 2021, could be a weekly, right? So if somebody got into an options position today, that might be a, a expiration date that they're choosing if they're doing a weekly. Obviously, January 19, 2024, is years away. So we're talking about a little over two years away from now. Again, giving yourself the optimum time. And we're going to talk about Delta and all that, uh, why that's valuable and data. Yeah. And I just wanted to add one thing here, yeah, go ahead. especially especially when you're just getting into options, guys. I always tell people to buy time. If you're someone new getting into options, first, I always tell people, guys, uh, stocks first, investing in ETFs, investing first is key. I did not trade options until two years after me learning about the stock market and studying. So I really want to drive this point home because it's important to understand. I, I find it that a lot of people are hopping into trading on their second day in the markets, second week in the markets. So I, I wanted to really tell people and stress to people that it's important to take your time, take your time to learn the information, take your time. It's not a rush. Um, like I said, I started when I was 17. I didn't start trading until I was 19. So I really want to stress that point home. And also the short term options for someone that does not know technical analysis that is brand new is like going to the Russian roulette table in Vegas. And I'm going to say that one more time. Someone trading short term options without knowing technicals is like going to the Russian roulette table in Vegas. And I'll leave that one there. <laughs> Don't do it. Strictly for linemen, not for freshmen. That's not for freshmen. All right, let's keep rolling. Strike price. So again, strike price is the number, right? Is the, the price at which the asset can be bought or sold. It is the price that the given asset will appreciate. Call, that's if you're buying a call or depreciate, that's a put. And so here's our example, right? Apple right now, again, it's at $175.85. If I'm going to say 
I want to see it appreciate. I come up with a price or a target number that I'm saying it's going to reach. And so $200 would be my strike. If I believe that Apple will pull back, I'm listening to all the reports. I'm following all my technicals and the fundamentals. And I'm saying, all right, well, I feel like there's going to be a pullback in Apple. Then I'm going to make a put. And so $150 would be my put. And so let's figure this out. This is pretty cool here. Right. So where are we going to get our strike price from now? Past performance does not always predict future success. But if we're looking at Apple over the past 20 years, right? I know like we always talk about, let's look at it since its inception, but let's look at Apple since its past 20 years. To your right, if you look at the performance and you look at that column that's in parentheses, right? That is not a mistake. Apple has increased by 53,000% since 2001, right? And so if we're basing our, if we're going to make a call, or that's pretty far out, let's not use 20 years. Let's maybe use two years, right? So two, in the past since two years, is going up 150%. This year, it's up 32% year to date. And so even a conservative number, because I know when Rashad calls me, he's going to want a conservative number. Could we say that Apple could appreciate 10% by 2024 each year? Right. So that just means that Apple, which is 175 now, if it grows by 10 percent, it's at 192 by next December. If it grows by 10 percent in 2023, it's at 211 dollars. Right. So that means that it grew at 10 percent each year. Right. And that seems like that's something that's very viable to happen. Right. So remember, our call was at 200. And so if we just said Apple 200 call for 2024 based on its past performance, and a very conservative number of 10%, the likelihood of it hitting 200 is pretty high, right? So that's kind of a, one of those things when you look at strong companies and their past performance, now you see why you come up with these strikes. Yep. Yep, so when taking a look, when you're, when you're taking a look at options, you know, purchasing contracts, not shares, it's important to understand the difference between the bid and the ask. So this is going to be a, a pivotal part of what we talk about here tonight. This is the part. <laughs> this, yeah. So because this is what gets a lot of I already saw in the chat here that someone said Robin Hood uh, order fill suck. So we're, we're going to talk about the difference between the bid and the ask. So a lot of people, when they hop into options trading. They're immediately, as soon as they go ahead and enter a trade, they're going to give money to the market. And why is that? Because a lot of people are purchasing options at the ask price. So the ask price represents the minimum price that the seller is willing to take for that same security. The bid price represents the maximum price that the buyer is willing to pay for a share of the stock or another uh, security. You never want to pay at the ask. Um, and Troy is going to show you, we have an example on the next slides where we're going to actually, you're going to actually get a chance to see. So a lot of times you'll see like the bid will say 700 and the ask will say like 920. So that's called the spread. So when you hear where, when someone asks you, Hey, what is the spread on that call that you're looking that at or that put you're looking at? The spread is the difference between the bid and the ask. So if the bid is 700 and then the ask is 920, that's a $220 difference in spread. So guess what's going to happen to someone that goes ahead and uses what is called a market order instead of a limit order. So when it comes to options, you want to use limit orders. Why do you want to use limit orders? Because you're able to go ahead and specify the price that you actually want to get into that security. Oh, Lawrence, you got to tell them that again. You got to tell them that again. The difference between market and limit. Yeah. So market is just going to put you in at any price. So what's going to happen if you use a market order and there's a $220 spread, you're going to more than likely be down $100 instantaneously, instantaneously. So who wants to be down $100 instantaneously? I know I don't. I know all you guys don't want to. So make sure that you're using a limit order. So what is the best way to get filled with options is to use a limit order, especially what happens is when you're actually buying out those further out options. The strategies that Troy and Rashad talk about when you're talking about 2023 and 2024, the bid and the ask is going to be spread wide because there's not a lot of volume and open interest on the contracts, which we'll talk about later. We're getting there. So, yeah. 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 And I tell people as simple as this, man, if you've ever bought a car and you've walked into the dealership and somebody tells you a price, most nine times out of 10, you're going to say, all right, well, 
I can't, I'm not paying that price. This is what I'm paying, right? And so it's the same thing when you think about these contracts. The ask price is the premium. The bid price is what you're going to pay. You're willing to pay that, right? And if you put it at a limit order, you're saying, I'm not going above that. Now, sometimes that limit will get filled and sometimes it doesn't. But this is when, I'm, when we talk about patience, right? If it's not filled, that's fine. You can leave it out for a day. If it doesn't get filled, the next, do it again, right? You're going to stick to your script. That's your limit. You're not going above that. It'd be the same thing like if you're going to buy a car. This is how much I can afford. This is what I'm paying for it. I'm not paying anything over it. The problem is that a lot of people who are new to options come in and they click market. And sometimes it fills at the highest price as possible. In fact, it could say 920. By the time you buy it, somebody's already purchased it and now it's going up to 940. And so you've actually paid more than you thought. And so that's why it's very, very important. This is like one of those keys that people will lose money right away. And they look at their account and like, wait, how come every time I buy my option contract, I'm in the negative? This is probably one of the main reasons why that is happening. So treat it like the dealership. Look at the bid, maybe go 10 to 15 cent or above the bid and say, that is where I'm staying. I'm not going above it. If it fills, it fills. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Uh, let's get into some things. Yep. So now we have here, this is TD Ameritrade for those that are new and may have not looked at TD Ameritrade. Uh, TD Ameritrade Thinkorswim is one of the most reputable platforms out there for people to trade. Um, TD Ameritrade Thinkorswim is set up like this. This is actually showing you how to actually go ahead and actually execute and buy an actual options contract. So here we have up here, option strategy will start in the top left corner, single order. The underlying symbol obviously is Apple. Um, also, what you want to know is when you're actually buying options, this is key, action, that action button right there. Whenever you're purchasing options, calls or puts, it always needs to be on buy to open. That's whether you're on Charles Schwab, Fidelity, uh, E-Trade, whatever platform that you're on, it needs to be on buy to open when you're purchasing options. Now, when you are selling when you are ready to close your position, it needs to be on sell to close. So you need to make sure that you have it on buy to open and sell to close. If you end up having it in something else, you're gonna mess yourself up. So it needs to be buy to open when you're purchasing your options. And then it needs to be sell to close when you're selling your options. Then you have next door, which you're going ahead and typing in how many contracts you're purchasing, either one, two, et cetera. Then you have select your expiration. You had an expiration, so you can select the date. And we had the dates pulled up over here, and we'll get to those in a second. Your strike, and your is it a call or a put? And we'll get to that. Then also you see limit order. So this see, is I already, I have it filled in for you. <laughs> yeah, limit order. You don't need. You need a limit order. And then guess what? Price. You see what happens is when you have a market order, that price box right here won't pull up. Because you now you all you do when you hit market is you just hit review order, limit order, then you put in price. Also, time and force um, day. So you want to keep it on day. Um, if you keep it on day, it'll make sure that it enforces during the day. Now, if that price is at a limit order and it does not enforce at the end of the business day at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that order will cancel. Right. So and that's not a bad thing, y'all. That's not, not a bad, bad thing. thing. Yep, that's not a bad thing. I'm just letting you guys know that if you have an order that's pending and it's in time and force day and it doesn't execute during market hours, options are only able to be purchased because I know we got a lot of new people on here and they're probably going to ask the question. Options can only be purchased in between 9.30 Eastern Standard to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The only options that can be traded outside of that time is the SPY and the QQQ, which can be traded until 4.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So options can only be executed from 9.30 all the way till 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, when we take a look at the strike panel over here, turn your direction, you see we're on Apple, January 28th, 2022, which is next month's, uh, the last week of, ne uh, of next month's expiring contracts. We see that at the time when the screenshot was taken, Apple was at 171.89. I believe Apple closed at 175.76 today. So taking a look here, you have the, the strike price here in the middle. You see calls, puts, and then you also see bid and ask. So on the call side and on the put side, and then the strike 
That's the strike price in the middle. Now you see a highlighted blue on the left side to the top left, and you see a highlighted blue to the bottom right. So I want to talk about something Shadi said um, earlier today. If you guys watched his reel, he said something that was really keen, um, and I wanted to make sure that this was something that I touched on here tonight. Um, Shadi said in his reel, he said, a lot of people who are purchasing out the money options are losing money. So I'm going to put an end to this tonight. Why do, why, do, why do I say this? Because what's happening is, is that a lot of people are purchasing out the money options and out the money options are very, very, very risky, especially in the short term. With leap options, options that have a lot of time, like January 2024, 200, you get a little leeway. But with the trading aspect, when you're buying out the money options, you're actually setting yourself up for failure. So why am I saying this? So out the money options, typically for new options traders, is like just beautiful. It's like heaven. People are like, oh my gosh, it's so cheap. You mean I could buy this option for you know $400, $500 and I could profit from it? And what happens is, is that there's also a factor in of average true range. So how much does the stock move on a day-to-day -day basis? So my point here tonight is to really make sure that people understand that you wanna focus on buying in the money versus out the money contracts. So these uh, contracts highlighted. Oh. My fault, my fault, my fault. Yeah, go ahead. Yep, so these contracts highlighted in the blue here on the top left here in calls, that 170 strike, 167.5, 165, 162.5, 160. What makes them in the money calls? What, like, what makes them in the money calls is what someone's gonna ask. Well, the current stock price at this time was 171.89. So what are you actually doing when you actually buy a 170 strike? So when you buy a 170 strike, you're essentially saying, hey, by January 28th, 2022, Apple is going to be above 170. Well, Apple already is. So Apple is considered a in, this contract right here is considered in the money. The 170 strike is considered in the money. So it has what is called intrinsic value, intrinsic value. Now the 172, 175, 177 are considered out the money. Apple is not higher than 172.5. No, no, it's not higher than 175 and it's not higher than 177.5. So what happens is, is that people who are buying in the money options, you set yourself up better. Why? Because you're putting, some people may say, well, I'm paying more. Yes, it's better to pay more for an in the money option a lot of times than buying out the money options. Why? Because on January 28th, 2022, a lot of those out the money options will be expiring worthless. And so most options expire worthless, especially out the money options. And so it's imperative that we understand that it is okay to spend more on buying in the money option contracts because it's gonna give you a higher probability of actually profiting. And also guys, the first thing that we wanna think about when we're focus on trading options is actually not making money. How do we protect ourselves on the downside? What happens is, is that if someone was to buy that 180 strike right here at Apple, and it's cost about $425, and Apple was to decline $5, that option contract would actually lose a lot more value than someone who has that 165 strike or that 162.5 strike. So why am I saying this? Because when you're having your options in the money, you have what is called intrinsic value. Options that have intrinsic value, what? They actually have higher deltas. So delta is the amount per dollar that you make as the stock price increases. And out the money options have higher theta. So what is theta? Theta is the time decay. So out the money options have a higher time decay. So for anyone that's been trading options before and it's like, okay, I went and got a 180 strike on Apple and Apple went up to 172, but I didn't make any money. Why is that happening? Because what's happening is, is that the Delta is out, excuse me, the theta is outweighing the Delta. So you're not making as much money when you have those out the money options. The only way for you to make a lot of money without the money options is when the stock has a drastic move upward. For example, today with Tesla, Tesla went up 70 points today. So the people who had thousand dollar calls for tesla yesterday when tesla was at 9 30 they were extremely risky with that but because tesla actually went up and increased that much people actually made a lot of money off of that so what happens people are ready to go ahead and grab these out the money options because they're cheaper 
what happens with a stock like Apple, which doesn't really move very fast, but it is a consistent stock as we put up on the sheet. Apple is a consistent stock. So what happens is, is that when these stocks don't move as fast, a lot of people get hurt because they're in out the money options and the time decay is way too much. We, so we call that losing your shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't lose your shirt. <laughs> yep. So you want to focus on really buying those in the money options, especially if you're doing any short term trading. If you're doing a, a more of a leap strategy, you still want to stick to buying in the money options, but you can actually go a little bit farther out. Um, it is OK, but you do want to be protecting yourself because a lot of times the out the money strategy is one of those sexy things that a lot of people want to push on people. But we don't want to do that here. We're not pushing sexiness out here. We're pushing consistency. So it's important to be consistent versus trying to be sexy and be cheap, because the first thing that we had a mindset of coming in is how can I get the pretty much take the smallest investment and turn it into a million dollars overnight? And so out the money land is where most people go. And then out the money land ends up, you end up losing all your money. And this is just the reality. Yeah. So there's a couple of things I want you to see here, right? Somebody's going to be looking at this. And they're like, yo, Troy Lawrence, what y'all bugging, man? It says it's $7, right? Yeah. But we told you, and we're going to reiterate it again, right? Each contract is worth 100 shares. And so our eyes are trained. I know, Lawrence, we have the same thing. Once we see that number, we're moving the decimal twice. And so that's not really $7. That's really $700. That's the bid. It's $700. I'm going to show you why. And I think this is dope because I took this picture. Uh, I think Friday I took this picture. But if we go on to TD Ameritrade now, and I'm sure somebody will do this after they, they watch um, this whole uh, class, that 172 strike and that 175 strike are now in the money. And so they're going to be blue when you look at it. And so that's pretty interesting. Another thing is I want you to notice the prices, right? If we look at the price, like that $700 uh, bid, because it's so close, it's a lot cheaper. When we go out further, and I'm going to show you an example of that. When we go out further, right, to like 2024, it's going to be a lot pricier. And the reason being is that the likelihood of the stock or the asset for this example, Apple, actually being 175 or 170 when it's already at 175 now, it's highly likely. So it's a premium on that. So like this expiration date is for next month, but we're going to show you an example of what it looks like in a few years, and you're going to notice the price difference. But I wanted you to just key in on that, right? Like this is not seven dollars. This is seven hundred. This is not nine dollars and twenty cents. This is nine hundred and twenty dollars. So that's the ask. And this is a problem too. Like I get upset, Lawrence. You probably do too, right? Like I'll put a limit order in, and then I'll look at last, and we'll show people what last is, mm -hmm. and I'll see somebody fills at nine twenty, and I have my limit at seven thirty. What that does is it messes up the chain for the next person try to buy a contract. Now I have to raise my limit up because somebody who was inexperienced came and said, all right, well, I'll pay the premium. And so yep. it kind of messes up the game a little bit, but we're giving y'all the game right now so that that doesn't happen. So when we and see then, that. Yeah. And then one thing, now one thing I want to say is like when the option order doesn't execute, I know this happens to a lot of people, especially people that are not savvy with their platform. And that's something that I really want to say is like, really learn your platform too, the execution of your platform. It is okay to paper trade on TD Ameritrade, think or swim, uh, take some practice trades and get used to like the execution part. Cause actually buying options, like for the first time I can even, I can admit myself, my first time buying options, I had anxiety. Like, was I doing it right? Did the, did the order fill properly? You know, these are so, kind of some of the, uh, questions that we kind of have from a psych psychological standpoint, to be honest. And so I want to make sure that, you know, people take time to understand their platforms. Um, and if the order does not fill the first time, it is OK to go ahead and refresh that order and re input that order. My graduates from my school being Forbes backdrop, backdrop, <laughs> <laughs> mic drop, backdrop, backdrop. <laughs>